we're going to do some makeup demos tonight. So that's going to be fun. I have my, my trusty boomsticks right, ready to go. I'm excited about that. All right, so we have Martha from Texas. I hope things, I, when I was thinking about the crazy weather, I was specifically thinking about Texas. So hopefully, uh, Martha, it is, it is a little bit more normal for you right now. We have Mitzi from Hollister, California, and Karen from, I'm only getting the first letter of your state. I'm not sure if we, if somebody can, but Karen, welcome. <laughs> we have Alisa from Huntsville, Huntsville, Alabama. I know some people down I there. State. Yay. <laughs> Very That's nearly. awesome. All right. And it is five o'clock for me, it is eight o'clock for East Coasters and six and seven in between there. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of get rolling here. Welcome everybody. Welcome to ladies night. Happy St. Patrick's day. You can see I'm wearing my green. I did have to borrow this shirt from my son. Not going to lie. Uh, the green <laughs> shirt that I wanted to wear was, it was just, it needed to be ironed and let's be honest. Like, <laughs> ironed or ready to go. We went with the ready to wear, uh, but it is from my son's closet. So um, I thought it was very appropriate. I am very Irish. That's the name Colleen. So wanted to do. And um, I'm going to kind of jump right in to do some intros. Uh, first, I just want to introduce myself. I am Colleen. I'm the COO of Boom by Cindy Joseph. And this is Boom Ladies Night. Um, and I just want to say thank you first for being here, for taking some time out of your day, your evening to spend with us. I love these live events uh, because it's really our chance to get to know you, to get to know our community. And it's our opportunity to kind of dive deep into a few topics that we, you know, we think all women should be talking about, uh, especially those of us over 50. Uh, so that's what we're going to do tonight. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm going to introduce you to our lovely guests that we have with us this evening. Um, first, we have Margaret Evans, and Margaret works from home. She is a writer and a columnist. She's married. She has a 19-year-old daughter, and her pro-age story started many years ago in her 20s and 30s, and she's going to talk about that a little bit, um, but she is, is very passionate about passing the pro-age uh, the pro age, her pro age knowledge onto her teenage daughter. We love that. Um, and then we also have Susan Esco. Hi, Susan. Hi. Uh, and Susan is a model and a commercial actress, and uh, she she is embracing her silver hair. She has a she's a pro age advocate and founder of the Die Free to Be Me movement, which uh, I'm sure she'll tell you a little bit about in just a second. Um, and that inspires, you know, all women to kind of be comfortable with themselves at any age and to, you know, to love themselves. So I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about that too. Uh, so, but first, Margaret, if you want to kind of tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay. Um, well, as you said, I am a writer and columnist. Um, actually, my husband and I publish a couple of small news weeklies here in Beaufort, South Carolina, down on the coast of the great state of South Carolina. Um, we've been doing that for about 20 years, which is how long we've been married. Um, I write a bi-weekly column that is kind of where I put all my opinions and passion and, and thought, such as it is, um, we have a 19 year old daughter, Amelia, who is a freshman at Clemson University. And um, I, I'm not supposed to talk about pro life right now. I mean, pro, <laughs> sorry, I'm not supposed to talk about pro age right now, right? Just oh, you can, you can talk about whatever you'd like, but know that we're going to get deep in that too yeah, like in a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, basically, I'm a, I'm a work from home um, writer, editor, columnist, um, opinionator. And I love the pro age movement. I um I yeah I'll talk more about that later. That's nice, really nice. all I got. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love that we have women who are just you know they're they're out there putting putting the word out, which is which is awesome. So Susan, we would love to hear a little bit more about you too. Okay. Well, hi. I'm Susan Esco. Um, well, my backstory is I'm actually a speech pathologist. I'm in private practice. Been doing that for 23 years and um, 
was looking for something else to do in my retirement years. And when I, it was about eight years ago, I cut my hair off to a pixie. So all of this hair, I had all this hair, it was all dyed and I chopped it off to about an inch and I grew out my hair for three years. And during that time, it was, it was pretty much life altering. I went through a lot of changes and um, going against society's perceptions was really difficult because people actually, they cocked their head to the side when they saw me and they thought maybe I had chemo and I'd lost all my hair, you know, and it was growing in bright white. And so everyone thought I was older than I was. And um, it really taught me how to be strong and independent, more independent than I already was. And um, it taught me that my outside really didn't matter. It's the inside that, that matters. And I know we all have grown up with that saying, um, but it took me going through that journey of growing out this, this white hair um, to learn to love myself. And so the reason why now I'm an actress and a model is because I am using that, that forum to spread the message to other ladies, just be free to be you. And I came up with that hashtag, die free to be me, as a way to explain to the world, like why in the world did you grow out your hair? Like, I mean, why, why did you embrace your natural color? It's I'm die free simply to be me. I'm not trying to be anyone else. And um, yeah, I just learned how to love me for me. So that's, that's where it. the whole movement started about three years ago. And uh, I'm super excited to be here and be part of the Boom Sisterhood. Yeah, we, we are very, very happy to have you, both of you. And I love that story about, you know, cutting it to a pixie because I'm sort of in mid, you know, mid growing it out. And I, that to me, that is the bravest thing ever. Like, I don't know if I could do that. And that's kind of one way to just make it happen. So I love that. That is pretty inspiring. Love that. Yeah. In fact, I got so used to it. It was like a Jamie Lee Curtis type situation. Yeah. I got so used to <laughs> not having to do anything really to it that I, I right. actually considered keeping it short. But then my husband at the time was like, you know, you might want to grow it back out. So I did. And I'm glad that he suggested it um, it's, because yeah. it turned out to be multicolored. It's like this auburn in the back. Yeah. And the white in the front. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known that that was even there if I hadn't grown it back out. Right. How cool. Right. I know I, we've talked about this before too, on ladies night, like how, you know, your significant other definitely does have a vote. They don't definitely, they don't necessarily get to decide what you're going to do, but, but I certainly considered, you know, for a while anyway, my husband was not about the, letting the silver come in. And I said, you know, we're just going to try this. And it's, you know, it's down here now and he's so used to it. And he just, you know, I don't think he even realizes that it's not so, you know, it's, it's not so crazy and I'm so much happier. So I think that contributes to him, you know, accepting it too, you know? So I think that's a, that's a great story. I love how you, you know, you, you we always want to consider our, our significant others opinions, but I love that you, you do you ultimately, you know, you do what you want to do anyway so right. I love that that's and great. Your, your grow out pattern is really unique usually it's the yeah. white that frames the face you I know it's interesting in front. It's I really have all cool. this dark I know it's it's it is interesting uh but I'm enjoying it and it's kind of like like you said I would never know what it was going to look like unless you let it just come in I've considered you know do I want to like run to my colorist and have her sort of finish the job and but no like then that would be that would be another form of dyeing it and it's not really the the authentic so i'm ready to see what what the rest of it looks like when it comes in so but it's fun i love i love uh sharing the you know the silver hair stories it's it's one of the it's one of the highlights of ladies night for me um, <laughs> And honestly, the reason why I chopped it all off so short was I realized that your hair um, carries emotion and it carries your past. And I, yeah. I was ready to let go of my past that was attached to that hair. And so now it's all fresh. It's a whole yeah. fresh start and it's all healthy and it, you know, it loves me as much as I love it. I love that. That's so great. I had not thought about that, but it's so true. Yeah, we do sort of, you know, it's definitely, this is part of my past. I, I see what you mean by that. Um, so we're going to jump right into, we're going to start out the evening with some makeup demos and, you know, we're doing that. We, we get feedback on ladies nights um, and very often at the very beginning of the call, people are, they're excited and interested to hear about, you know, the, the boomsticks and 
see a little demo. And so we're going to start out with that tonight. Um, and, you know, so you may have, if you, if you have been attended ladies nights before, you may have noticed that we kind of put that at the end. Well, tonight we're going to mix it up. Um, and Susan and myself, we have both come makeup free this evening so that we can kind of show you how we do, um, you know, just at the, at the top of the call here. So I, I think, you know, just so that it's a little, so it's a little easier to follow. Susan, maybe I'll have you go first, kind of do okay. your thing and you can talk us through it and then I'll do mine real quick and then we'll keep moving. All right. Awesome. Okay. So just trying to make my face a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. That's better. Okay. Well, first of all, I love, I love these boom sticks. I mean, first of all, they, they all, all everything I need is in my hands. So it also fits in my little fanny pack or my purse or whatever I might have. And I take it to the beach. So after, before, like if I'm going somewhere after the beach or if I wanna go from the beach to maybe grab a drink on the strip or something, I already have it in my little fanny pack. And, and you really don't need a mirror to apply it because we all kind of know where our cheekbones are. Yeah. <laughs> um, so true. But yeah, my, the first one that I really love is the Boomstick Glow. And it's basically a moisturizer and a little, little thing here. And what I just realized uh, recently is that you could also put it on your cuticles. Yeah. So when things are feeling dry or, you know, around the, the lip line. So what I typically do, let's go ahead and take off the glasses. I typically, I put it on my lips first and then all along those lip lines, just like that. And I, I already have used um, the moisturizer. Um, so I've already used that. And, and I might just put some around like these little beauty lines. I don't like to call them wrinkles. I earned every single one of them. And that's one thing about my movement too, is that I, I'm just embracing all of me, gray hair, wrinkles, age spots, sunspots. You can see, I don't mind. I'm not shy. You're lovely. Thank you. And I'm 51. And I love saying that. I'm like, I'm half a century plus one. I love it. Yay. You're a youngster, then, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got plenty of life to live. So then next, I use the boomstick color. And it gets my hair out of the way. And one thing us gray hair ladies need to realize is that you got to get your hair away from your face so that you don't stain it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then I just put a little bit here a little bit there. And depending on what's going on, like if it's daytime, I put less on. If it's nighttime, I'll put more on. If I know I'm gonna be like in a shaded shadowed area, I, I put more on, but it just rubs right in. And then you look like you're glowing, like you're happy. That's the one thing I love to do is create happiness in people. Whenever I see them or meet someone on the street, I like to um, raise their vibe. I like to leave them vibing higher than they were before they met me. I love that. Rub it in there and then I put some on my lips. Love it. So I darken it, you know, like I said, if I'm going out at night versus daytime. And then this is fun. I've never been a girly girl. You're probably like, oh my God, you're a model. How, why, how does that happen? I was a tomboy. So this is awesome for me. It's super simple. So I love that stuff. I yeah, put some highlight glimmer. just along here, the glimmer, yep. Along the, like that. See, you can see it highlighted. So cool. It's great. It's like transformed. You're transformed. Yeah, and then I put yeah. some underneath my eyebrows. And I did fill in my eyebrows with a little bit of eyeshadow before we came on, just so you could see my eyebrows like that. And then I put a little bit on top and my lipstick. And that love boom that. color is my favorite lipstick. Yeah, I just love great. it. Yeah, I think that's about it. That's well, all I do. And then I put on boom bright, but I'm gonna spare you watching me put on my mascara. Okay? <laughs> we, all make, we all make those funny faces like, yeah. Oh. yeah. I did see that meme once, it's funny. Everyone makes the same like, <laughs> like you're pulling your face down. Yeah, everyone does the same thing. It's funny. And we but what I can that. tell you, <laughs> what I can tell you about Boom Bright is that um, the container's recyclable. Yeah. The the brush is 
absolutely amazing. Like, look at that. It separates every single lash. And it smells so and good. It smells so good. <laughs> yes. so good. I've never had anything on my eyes that smelled good. I know. Yeah. That's a, a rose block. essence. I just got blocked on my nose, I think. Anyway, that's how fast and easy it is. I just yeah. love this stuff. Beautiful. You looked beautiful before, but now, like you said, you're just like, you're, you, you're glowing. Now you're rising, you're raising our vibe now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Our vibes are raised. I love it. I love My it. job is done. Here you go. Love it. Well, I will, I will entertain the same. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I already put a moisturizer on Boom Gold, which we're going to talk about in a little bit too, but I got my three sticks here. So I would do the same. I would put the Boom Gold probably just in the dry spots. And again, like this is the lip balm. This is, I bring this everywhere. This is in every bag. I have several of them. Um, and then I just do a little, just a little dot on, I have very, um, pinkish skin like when I when I start to rub this in I will get very pink I'm just assure I will assure you that the pinkness will kind of go away as we talk um, but even just this the action of just rubbing my face does get my face to be a little bit pink so um, you know that will die down a little bit and 100% always on the lip and I can, I can see that I am on zoom, but I can barely, I can barely make out any features <laughs> on my face without my glasses on, which is pretty funny. Um, but that, like Susan said, the beauty of it is you don't really need to, like, you know, where your eye is, you know, where your cheeks are, as long as you don't, you know, put it on too heavily, you just blend, it just blends right in. So I use my fingertip too. I noticed you do that too, Susan. Mm -hmm. um, and I just put a little bit on my eyelids. And I actually learned this other trick from a boom ambassador. She puts it on her eyebrow. I've been doing uh that's kind of cool. That was fun and a new thing for me too. Was and that the boom color? Yeah, I've done I do, you know, this, glimmer. I do the this glimmer. glimmer. Yeah, I only use boom color on my lips and my cheeks. That's the only okay. thing. I, because I get so pinkish anyway, if I were to put it up here, I just I have tried it and it's it's okay but I prefer just a little bit on my lip and a little bit on my cheeks. I like the glimmer. Um, I put that a little bit on my, on my eyelids. And like I said, this new trick I've been doing is just smoothing my eyebrow down with yeah. it. Um, nice. And that's kind of, that's kind of it. Like, done. Voila. And um, yeah, and same like with the, with the bright I do, if I'm going out somewhere, I will put the bright on or if I'm going to be on a meeting, you know, that's my little zoom meeting go to kind of wait, you know, makes your eyes look a little more awake. And um, I also feel like um, I've gone back and forth since I've had to start wearing glasses, maybe like five or six years ago that I personally am embracing the glasses. I feel like this is like an accessory. Like I can oh, have yeah. a couple different pairs. So I'm like, I love the glasses, although I do have to take them off to put it on. And then I, it just gets a little blurry. Uh, but, but I yeah, love that, glasses, but I can't see this clip. If I'm sitting right here, I have to take my glasses off. Yeah, this, yeah. Man, it I, depends I on how you I normally would have glasses on right now. Yeah. I know, um, Margaret, you talked about um, using boom sticks to kind of transition from day to night. I know you're not going to do a demo, but oh, um, yeah. tell us how you do that. The main thing I do in the morning is I, I always go out for this long walk in the morning and I like to just put on a little bit of boom color just to feel better, just so I look better to myself and if I bump into any neighbors. Um, so I'll just do the color, you know, we're, like y'all did basically. Um, but then if I'm going out at night, I will, I will add some glimmer to like the tip of my nose, my eyebrow, and my, my brow bone, um, sometimes the top of my cheek. Um, I don't need as much glimmer as most people because as y'all know, I have oily skin, but I do like to have a little bit on the tip of my nose and my brow bone, especially. And, um, oh, and oh, and put it over my lips. I might try that right now. Uh, yeah. I like Ooh, it yeah. over it my color. Like a pearlescence, it gives like it. Like a color. pearlescence, yeah. So um, I don't think I blended that in very well. But um, yeah, sometimes I'll do that That's when great. I'm going out at night. And it's just, just kind of gets, makes you look a little, you know, a little more glimmery. Yeah. More yeah, yeah. We actually have a question that I think this is a perfect segue. Um, 
So Arlene is asking, do we have to touch it up often during the day or does it last most of the day? I think for me, it kind of lasts, you know, I don't, I will usually put a little color back on like after you eat, you know, it kind of, oh, oh, a little, yes. a little zhuzh, if you will. Uh, but for me, it's, it lasts, you know, as long as I needed to, but I think that kind of goes with what you were saying is like, you already have it on, on your face. Um, and then when you go out in the evening, you're just layering on top of it. You're kind of giving it a little more. Yes. I usually add a little more blush at night. And, um, and if I, I, I would say for me, the lipstick, the color does not stay on all day. I, I don't really notice cause I'm usually just at home, but if I go back out at night, I'm going to put some more color on. Right. I'm and glad it doesn't stay on all day. Those lipsticks that stay on all day and through the night, if you don't take them off, it's scary. I'm like, what is yeah. in that? <laughs> yeah. Right. There's dyes and, and like they're really paper. drying and yeah. yeah, they're drying. This feels like it just feels so moisturizing. Like right it now, does. I would just want to keep, I don't know, I just want to put some more on. You really yeah. feel like you're giving yourself skin care, not just makeup when you, when you put this stuff on. And that's what I love about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Point. I yeah. Mine have... stays on most of the day as well. Like, yeah. I would just put more on at night. Just like you said, Colleen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do have one question from Anita and she says, I love the boom products, but the moisturizer, which I'm, I'm assuming she means the glow, uh, seems to dry out your lips. Any suggestions? Um, other than, I, I mean, it could be that it could be the beeswax or maybe it's just I don't know because it's it. I don't have that experience, so I can't really speak to that. But um, maybe if you use it because it is a moisturizer, it does have all those you know really good ingredients: the propolis and and honey and beeswax and things that are nourishing for your lips. That maybe if you put something you know something more moisturizing on top of it. I don't know. We all have different you know different skin types, and I would imagine you know your lips are no different around the, you know, outsides of your lips. Maybe you get, you know, if you get dried out from that, but that would be my suggestion. If something else works for you, I would maybe put the Boomstick Glow on first for the nutrients, for the, you know, the uh, moisturizing effect or the, yeah, for the, for the nutritive effect is what I'm trying to say. You know, those, those really good ingredients and then maybe put something that's more moisturizing on, you know, after that. I, it's my go-to chapstick. Yeah, it's, I I have this with me at all times. In fact, I was I was thinking I was just like, well, why I use so much of this that I had to get a I had to get a new one because I use it so much. I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice to have like the double this being double sized? Because I usually do put it all over my face. It just yeah. feels so good. Me too. And then like you said so with the cuticles, when I when I discovered that too, it's like I just it's basically if you know our um, our moisturizers like our our you know, our product line, we have Boom Silk, which is in a jar, you know, it is a cream. Um, and that is, it's essentially the same ingredients that's in the Boomstick Glow, but this you can kind of take everywhere with you. So I end up taking this with me and same thing, like I end up using the Glow Stick quite a, you know, a lot faster than the other sticks. Um, and we do have another question uh, as far as how long they last. Well, um, and this is a question from Susan, another Susan, um, asking how long they last. And I think that, you know, depending, like, you know, like our guests are saying, you know, it de depends on how, how often you use them, you know, if you're using them as an all over face moisturizer and on your cuticles and, you know, glow is definitely going to go a little bit faster. Uh, but the color and the glimmer for me, they last quite a long time. Um, can I, can I demonstrate, let's show you what my sticks look like. Yeah. I've had my sticks for a year. Yeah. I still I, have, I still have this much left and I use it probably 50% of the time during the week. Yeah. And that's probably about half I would say. Yeah. yeah. So they last a very, 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 very long time. Yeah. And yeah. they do, while they don't expire per se, Susan, um, Susan, who asked the question, uh, they do have what's called uh, a PAO or a, uh, a, it's basically product after opening, like you should use it within this amount of time. And so once you open and start using the color stick, um, the recommended PAO is 12 months, same with glimmer and with glow is six months because it has those all natural ingredients in there. Um, so yeah, they, while they don't necessarily expire, you can use them past that. We just do have a recommended 
you know, um, a recommended use. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, and then another Susan, well, we have lots of Susans on the, hey. on the call tonight. Uh, she asks if you can use Glimmer for daytime too. I think we oh, really yeah. did. Yeah, it just adds that little bit of pop. Um, and certainly, as you said, Margaret, you can layer it and kind of for yeah. night, a nighttime. Or it's not look. super sparkly. It's just right. it's very subtle, a very subtle thing. Yeah. 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 I think Cindy used to say it does not, it doesn't call attention to itself. It calls attention to you. It, you know, puts the attention on you. So it's, it's very, it's a very subtle glimmer. Yeah. So if I were going to the gym, I would, I wouldn't use the, the color. I would just be using glimmer. I put glimmer okay. on my lips. I put it on my cheekbones and above on my eyes. Nice. So, yeah. I think it's mostly a daytime type of situation for me. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. I can see why. I mean, it, it may, it just sort of like enhances your skin. Mm -hmm. you know? And you, yeah. you talked about this last night. You have dry skin. I have oily skin. So I need less of that, but you might need more. Right. Of it, you know? Yeah. So it'll vary a little bit how long it lasts you, but I think that's a pretty fair, you know, that's a pretty fair assessment. Um, let's see, we have a couple more questions. One was uh, whether or not the mascara is waterproof. The mascara is not waterproof. Um, and we chose it, we, we chose to have a non waterproof mascara, at least for our first mascara. I, I don't want to drop too many hints, but it's possible, you know, that we may have a waterproof version coming. Uh, we're, we're considering it because so many people, you know, everybody likes a little bit different thing when, when it comes to cosmetics, but this particular boom bright is not, uh, is not waterproof. And that is because, you know, we designed it with women of our age demographic in mind, you know, your, your eyelashes tend to, you know, be a little bit, uh, a little bit softer, maybe a little thinner, they come out a little bit easier. So we wanted it to be really gentle, really easy to remove. So that was, but we did get some feedback that like, hey, I would love a waterproof mascara. So who knows what might be in the future, but this particular one is not, uh, is not waterproof. Um, Let's see, I think we have one or two more questions and then we're gonna jump to the next, the next thing. Uh, let's see. Um, Judy is asking of all the moisturizers that Boom makes, uh, which is the best to use under foundation? Now I don't use a foundation, so I'm not sure if either of you ladies have a thought around that. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely have some videos of ambassadors that use it. Look, Susan's like, it's all about the nectar. Yeah. All about the nectar. I yeah. like nectar just a lot. Like it yeah. sounds, just like it sounds nectar. It's like nourishing. It's, yeah. I feel like a little bee. And it's, yeah, very, it's very thin too. You know, like it's not thick and goopy. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost like nothing when you put it on, but it's Absorbs something. Absorbs nicely. Yeah. Right. And it, and it only takes like little, like two or three drops to cover your whole face. And then you have extra for your neck. It's like, you I've, had this, I've had this, I've this model for a year too, and I'm not through it yet. So yeah. Yeah, this all the products are like a drop or two. They really okay. go a long way. So yeah. Um, here's a question for you, Susan. Uh, Michelle asks, and the reason I, I say for you, because I think you spoke about this um, when we talked yesterday, she's asking if, do I put my SPF moisturizer on before or after the Boomstick Glow? And maybe it was you, Margaret. I can't I remember. did actually it see that. Um, yeah. Okay. I actually do every morning put an SPF. Um, I put, I actually use a, a BB cream that's like almost like a tinted moisturizer. It, right. it doesn't cover anything, but it kind of, for me, it kind of like makes my pores look a little smaller. It's got sunscreen in it and, and it's moisturizing, but mine's oil free. And this is just a drugstore thing that I use and, and right. mainly use it for the sunscreen, but I would put it on before, definitely before putting on the boom sticks, wouldn't you guys? Yeah. Yeah, that would. Would, that's what I would do too. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers your question, Michelle. Um, let's see, we have a couple more. Natalie is asking if the Boomstick Glow will keep her skin from drying if you're wearing it under a mask at work. I would say- I don't know, probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't, obviously I work from home so I don't wear a mask out, out there. Um, but I do know that my mom wears a mask at work and she wears her boomstick glow. So I think, you know, it's definitely super hydrating and it's, you know, you can, you can apply 
several layers of it, of course, before you put the mask on, I would imagine that it couldn't hurt. It's moisturizing. So uh, at least for most people, I know we had that one, one uh, question earlier that said it dries out her lips. I think that might be um, an anomaly. I'm not sure that that's not my experience anyway. Yeah, I can't imagine it drying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so our, our Susan Johnson, she's saying to Margaret, she's so happy to hear from someone who has uh, a little bit more oily skin. Oh, like, yeah. Like it's nice to, yeah. <laughs> it's always nice to know that, like to be relatable. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I have found that a, a lot of Boom products work really well, despite my oily skin or maybe... Maybe they actually make it better. I'm not sure, but they definitely work well, which was great to know, you know? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I, we have a lot of questions. I don't know if I will get to all of these that are coming in right now. I'm going to ask one more and then we're going to jump and then I will come back to these. We'll have a little bit of more time for Q&A at the very end, but I definitely want to get into the next thing. Um, one, this one question that we do get a lot um, and it's from Carol. She says, does it work on dark skin? And I have to say you know, it, these colors were specifically chosen by Cindy because they do work on all skin tones. They complement all skin tones because this berry color, um, you know, to hear Cindy describe it, um, it's kind of just, it's the color that you get when you flush, when you, when you blush, when you're, you know, when you're happy and joyful, uh, you know, kind of when your blood is pumping. So, so yes, definitely it is, um, it is universal for, for all skin tones. And we have a lot of, um, videos that kind of show different models with different skin tones. And, you know, if you check those out, you can really see like the before and afters, how beautifully it, it blends and, you know, looks on all skin colors. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, great questions, everyone. Thank you so much. And again, if I skipped any, I'm going to come back and we'll get some more in a little while, but I kind of want to uh, move on to the next, um, you know, the next little topic we're going to talk about, and that is honest and joyful aging and kind of defying the cultural norms that we, you know, are all so used to hearing and seeing everywhere. Um, so I know that, that our guests are very passionate about this topic. You know, that is essentially the pro-age movement, but it goes a little bit deeper than that, certainly for us and definitely for both Margaret and Susan, who have two very distinct stories about embracing their age. And I don't want to really wait any longer before we start talking about this. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Margaret. You did say something about uh, very inspiring in one of your videos. You mentioned that in your 30s, you kind of saw two different groups of women who really kind of approached aging in two different ways. And neither one of them was relatable for you. Um, and really? so at the time you said you were looking for like a role model of like honest and joyful aging, which is kind of where we got the name for this segment. So, uh, you know, we love that. And I would love to hear, you know, your story kind of tell us, tell us about that. Well, it's, it's not such a story. It's just, um, I think, as I said in my video, I'm, I am a columnist and that what that means is that I tend to overthink everything. Uh, because I write, I have to come up with something to write about. And I write about everything from, you know, pop culture to parenting, to politics, to every, all the things you're not supposed to talk about. I write about, and I remember as early as my, um, might've been my early thirties and I'm 56 now. So this was a long time ago. I was already um, thinking about the aging process. And I, I remember even uh, writing a column about this that I can't even find now because we didn't even have our website yet at that point. But um, I remember looking around at other at women that were older than me and some women my age and how they were aging and thinking to myself, how, how do I want to age? And there was this one group of women who seemed absolutely desperate to um, pretend they weren't getting older. They, they were spending all, they were spending so much energy and so much time and so much money um, trying to stay young. You know, the gym, the spa, the salon, the, the thing that really got to me were, you know, I saw women in their thirties, my age were, were getting Botox and women a little older than that were getting facelifts and, um, and, and, and it, it, it seems so frantic to me 
and so desperate and and it made me really sad and i thought to myself i i don't want to get on that treadmill i just don't want to get on that treadmill help don't make me get on this treadmill so i'm looking around and i'm looking around and there's this other group of women and they seemed a lot more sensible but they didn't really resonate with me either um this was the group of women who seemed to have sort of um looked in the mirror and said well um, my childbearing years are over. I don't need to hook a man anymore. So I'm just going to sort of let it all go. I'm just going to say goodbye to all that. And I'm just going to devote myself to, um, to my work and, and service and, um, you know, volunteer work and all the great things that I completely admired. And I thought that was so admirable, but I, I just wasn't quite that selfless. They, they seemed like they were just willing to sort of disappear and just sort of become invisible sort of behind the scenes, worker bees, making the world a better place. And, and, I, and I wanted to be more like them, but that didn't resonate with me either. Um, I still wanted to, um, I still cared about the way I looked and I wanted to be able to radiate my, my joy into the world through my face and still feel good about the way I looked. Um, so I started looking around for role models in my 40s. I thought, surely there's somebody on the public stage who is doing it differently, who's kind of found a, a middle way. And, um, and it was really hard to find. It was, it was um, I think I said in my video, they were few and far between. It, it was slim pickings. Um, you look at Hollywood, at least back then, this was you know, 15 years ago, you'd see women your own age come up to receive their Oscars and they looked like they were 25 years old. They had you know, no lines on their face and their hair. You know, and, and I couldn't relate to that. Um, I was looking around for somebody who was doing it differently. And I was starting to lose hope really in my early 50s until one day I was on Facebook and I came upon this amazing creature named Cindy Joseph. Aww. And she she blew my mind. She was, um, you know, she was she was passionate and radiant and funny. She had this mane of long silver hair and she was absolutely gorgeous. But what struck me was that she did not look young. She did not look like a young woman. She looked like an older woman. And she looked like an older woman who absolutely loved being an older woman. And I just thought, this is it. This is the kind of aging I want. This is what I want to do. And um, I, I say in my video, because you guys only let me talk for five minutes on that, that I immediately ordered a boomstick. But what actually happened was about a month or two later, I was at my sister's house for Christmas. Now, this is going to sound like a sad story, but it's really not. My sister's, this is about three or four years ago. My sister, her house burned down on Christmas Day. We were all there, 25 people, friends and family, having Christmas lunch and the kitchen caught on fire i shouldn't say it burned down it's a brick house it burned out we all, we all got out everybody was fine the house is rebuilt now everything's happy and jolly but all that my sister all she had left of all of her everything was one purse and within it was her new boomsticks that she had just gotten <laughs> We were literally at my mom and dad's house that night, Christmas night, and my sister's bawling, crying because her house, is, her beautiful home has burned down. It's like, all I've got left is, this, is my purse and these new boomsticks. And she gets her boomstick trios out, I mean, trio out. And I'm like, oh my God, is this that Cindy Joseph person? She's like, yeah. I was like, do you love these? She's like, yeah, they're great. So like tried her boomstick. <laughs> and we were just like crying about the fire, but going like, Aww. these are awesome and so that's when I ordered my boomstick <laughs> I ordered my a, a boomstick color wow what I'm a story sorry. I didn't mean to give you all the traumas or anything it's, it's this is all like this I said, is real this life is, this is real life Margaret and I anyway and so were... it seemed like a message from the universe that I was supposed to be getting involved with this pro-age movement Aww. when I got my boomstick color in the mail it really felt like a symbol of liberation and, and that's when I decided to start letting my gray streak that I'd had since I was 22 years old, just, I stopped coloring my hair and let it come in. And now, now we have like sort of Ooh. 
All kinds of colors going on. Wow. Ooh, your hair's so much it. longer than I thought. That looks beautiful. Well, it's actually short for itself right now. Yeah. But anyway, I love but, so that's, that's, that's my story. And, and I have not looked back. I am, um, I think that Cindy had it right. You know, grow older, embrace it, embrace who you are. You, I think that older women are beautiful. We don't have to disappear. We can be beautiful older women. Um, and really, it all comes from in here anyway. So I don't know. I think there's a lot more. I to love it. I am so glad that you shared that story. Yeah. What a real life moment. And, you know. Well, it was definitely real life. <laughs> yeah. For you to find that little bonding moment and that turned into something else for you. Yeah. And, yeah. My sister still uses them too. And she's, she's a, four That's years awesome. younger than I am. But I'm, oh, and my 19 year old daughter is in love. I gave her the other boomstick trio that y'all sent me and she now uses it so yeah I'm not just for older women anymore <laughs> had I known when I was 19 although that was in the 80s so maybe I wouldn't have <laughs> maybe that wouldn't have worked in the 80s it was all about excess but right. had I known about like the simplicity I definitely would have embraced oh, girl, I was an 80s child I was the blue eyeshadow you know the black liner all that I can't believe it looking but oh god right but it's true. These these boomsticks are not just for the older women. It's for anyone of any age who wants a simple, natural, cruelty-free regimen. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I love that you point that out too, that it is cruelty-free. Like we really think about, you know, the holistically, we think about the products, the packaging, the, you know, even literally the inks that we print our postcards on, the boxes, like it's all you know, and that's really kind of uh, the ethos that Cindy helped to kind of infuse in this company so that everything we, all our new products, everything we, you know, design or print or use has, you know, has these things in mind. You pointed it out a little bit earlier, Susan, the, um, the packaging on the bright, that it is, um, it is recyclable. The wand actually um, is upcyclable and you can find out more about it on our website, but the, the wand you can, uh, you know, you wash it off with soap and water and you can drop it in the mail to um, a wildlife like rehabilitation center. And they use the little brushes to like rehabilitate animals that have gotten, you oh, know, really? or oil, you know, you've ever, you've seen those commercials with the duck and the washing, dawn dishwashing you know, yeah. dishwashing stuff. Yeah. They need little brushes and things. And um, our sustainability coordinator, Marin, who, who researches all these things for us, um, she found this company that would take, you know, take the wands and upcycle them and use them for, you know, to rehabilitate animals. So, yeah. So like really every little piece we, we think about, and I love that you see that Susan and you point it out and yeah. And again, Margaret, thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, no problem. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Speak, okay. Speaking of thoughtful as a boom ambassador, I was uh, surprised one day when the doorbell rang and there was a flower delivery at my door and I was like who in the world is sending me flowers and it was my boom family and that, that was crazy. crazy you guys are so thoughtful it just it goes it goes uh, you know past all your your products you're you're actually a company that thinks about people and thinks about people's feelings and it's I mean, those, and those, my amb heart. those ambassador uh, packages that we got were so incredible yeah, it's fun. Well, we know that you, you, know, you ladies are passionate about the movement and, you know, we want to make sure that we're, you know, we're asking you to represent us. So of course we want you to, you know, have, have the goodies and have, have the products and get to try them all out. So I'm glad that you, you know, you appreciate them because we appreciate you both so much and all of our ambassadors really. But yeah, I feel like that is, um, you know, it is the least we can do for, you know, the contributions that you, you guys make. Cause you're out there in the world touching people that we don't know and kind of inviting them and, and introducing them to us too. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's all um, kind of comes full circle that way. We love, we love sending flowers too in goodie <laughs> boxes. It's one of our things. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna kind of um, I'm gonna kind of jump into the next little thing here, which is we're gonna talk about silver hair. So Susan, um, I know I mentioned it a little bit earlier. I'm kind of on my own little silver hair journey. You can see it's kind of this is you know I'm gonna I'm gonna basically say that 
the pandemic didn't hurt in this, in, in no. like kind of pushing me over that, like, all right, just do it. Cause you know, I couldn't get my hair colored anyway. So I said, I'm really just going to go for it. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm just happy because you just, until you really kind of let it come in a few inches, you don't really know what you're going to get. You don't know what it's going to look mm -hmm. like, so, you know, it was kind of fun discovering that and kind of seeing it. Um, but I know Susan, you have like a whole movement that you've kind of, you know, created and, uh, and cultivated out of this. Um, right. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, whatever you want to share. Okay. And then, um, you know, maybe we'll talk about like, you know, give people some tips if they're kind of thinking about it. Maybe we can like, just, you know, encourage people to just take the leap. Right. Well, first of all, I call, I call y'all COVID, COVID converts. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. Which is kind of a fun way of saying, yeah, I started during COVID. And, you know, I see it's usually like six months to year and then a year to your ear. So you're about a year, right, sis? Yeah. Yep, that's where um, I'm at. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. You can just track your progress by the inches. Um, but yeah, this, this whole Die Free to Be move, Me movement is basically about self love and you know, even if you're not ready to let go of the die, maybe you're ready to let go of the negative scripts in your head that say, I'm not enough, or I'm, I'm too fat, or I'm not productive enough, or whatever, you know, it's all about just learning how to love yourself unconditionally. I mean, as a mom, there's a way that we love our children, and it's unconditional, right? And it kind of perplexed me why I wasn't loving myself the same way. And forgive me if I cry, because I'm a big softie. Oh. But yeah, why, why aren't we loving ourselves unconditionally like we do our family members and our children? Why are we our biggest critics? And so when I learned to embrace, when I you know embraced my hair, and I say growing out your hair, I call it a transformation because I felt like I was a caterpillar. I was like everyone else just a caterpillar, and then I went into my chrysalis and I, I emerged a butterfly. So I call it the gray hair transformation, not transition. Um, just to, that. yeah, just to say it's, it's, it's a mind, body, spirit transformation. It's not just growing out your natural hair color. It's accepting aging. And what I know is what you resist persists. So if I were to focus on my wrinkles or my age spots, I'll just, they'll just, they'll more will just magically appear. They'll just come to me. Um, so I choose to, you know, embrace everything. And I think that we're all perfect just the way we were made. And uh, one thing that I learned during growing out my hair is that, you know, when, and this is one of my quotes on my website is, um, when one embraces love of self, magic surrounds you. So as soon as you stop beating yourself up, you're, you're aware of all the magical things that are around you. You know, when, you, when your head is not always grinding on how bad you are, how bad you think you look, you have time to appreciate. Yeah. And people always say, there's no way you're 51. And I'm like, I definitely am. I was born in 1969. I'm an 80s baby too. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, I definitely am. And I, you want to know my secret? And they say, yeah. And I said, well, my secret is moving in joy and gratitude. No matter what's going on around me, whether it's perceived as a negative thing, I just, I find gratitude and joy in the little things. And that, you know, makes it so I'm not worrying. And when you stress, you create problems at a cellular, cellular level right, right. in your body. So you stay young by being happy. So joy is the secret. Um, yeah. yeah, and so that's what my movement's all about. Is it about teaching women that self-love isn't selfish? It's not, you're not, people, I think as women, we, we expect ourselves to always be giving, giving, giving to other people. And we feel guilty when we give to ourselves. And giving to yourself isn't selfish. It's actually self-sustaining. If you don't fill your own cup, you're not able to fill others' cups. And um, absolutely, yeah. so important. Shout it yeah. from the rooftop. So I was like, I I talked. I always talk to myself. I'm like, Susan, <laughs> Susan, how can you get this message out to as many people as possible as quickly as possible? 
And I thought, well, I need to be in the media. I need to be out there in everyone's face. I need to just show them by example that you can have silver hair and still be freaking sexy. <laughs> yeah. You can, you really yeah. can. You really can. And so I decided to create a modeling and acting career. So I've been doing modeling and doing acting classes. And I have two different agents and I'm doing self submits now that during COVID, I'm doing a lot of self submitting at home. And um, yeah, just my long term goal is just to be a, mo a role model for other women out there just to love yourself. You know, life's well, too, you're life's certainly too. a role model for me now. Like this here, both of you, after hearing those <laughs> stories, yeah, I'm like, am I doing enough? <laughs> yes, no, it's it's great. It's uh, it's it's it is a message that we all need to hear, especially, um, you know, with all of the media and you know, I mean, I'm gonna I'm I'm dating myself here by saying like just even billboards. I remember driving in the car as a kid in the back seat and just the billboards like you know everything that you see is about looking a certain way and and that becomes this cultural norm and so um i love it i'm so proud of both of you you know just for this the, you know the strides that you're taking in the direction of just you know embracing who you are at any age really but uh you know we Thank have a little you. more experience now to be able to you know i'm so i'm so thankful that you're both kind of put putting that message out there and you know I literally feel it physically in my bones right now oh you know? I love yeah. that yeah I, I like to put it out there because I want I need more women around me doing the same thing you know I, we all I think we need each other yeah. it's hard to do it on your own right yeah. Yeah, I have, really a, I have a Facebook group called Die Free to Be Me High Vibe Silver Sisterhood. Can you get in with just streaks? Or do you yeah, yeah. It? It's it's for the it's for the silver haired or the silver curious. Oh, good. Oh, curious, it. come on in. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I I can't wait for mine to come all the way in. I, I'm not coloring at all anymore, but it's just still mainly in the front, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's all about sisterhood. You're, you're right, Margaret. It's all about surrounding yourself with high vibe or joyful, positive energy. And um, yeah, it well, kind I, of, I have to admit, it kind of irks me when these stars who are growing out their hair or who, or who got their hair dyed gray, like Jane Fonda or whatever, that mm -hmm. they get all the attention. I'm like, I have been doing this for eight for years. Seven years. <laughs> yeah, like nobody, nobody's writing a story about me. But you know, I'm glad that Hollywood is catching on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am too. I mean, yeah. I've seen some movies lately with women in their 50s who actually look like they're in their 50s. I, it, you know, I I saw a movie the other day called The Father with Anthony Hopkins and um, remember Olivia Williams who used to she was in like what was that movie with Bruce Willis? Like, you know, I see dead people, that movie a long time ago. Oh. Anyway, she used to be like this sort of ingenue, beautiful young English actress in the eighties. Yeah. And now she's it's like my time. age and she looks it, she has lines yeah. on her face. And I was just like, she seems so beautiful to me after yeah. seeing so many, you know, Nicole Kidman faces on, I'm sorry, Nicole, if you're watching, um, seeing so many perfect faces I mean perfectly unlined faces when I see a lined face now I get excited it, it's like yeah. right. it's so much more interesting to me yeah and I think I, we actually had a, a comment or it was more of a comment than a question um, about Botox when you were talking about that earlier yeah and this is kind of a good time I just want to like address it I don't want to ignore that person's no um, no it is a good time and you know what? While I mean, Nicole Kidman, you go if that makes you happy, and <laughs> you, you are, cool. yeah, and she's beautiful. Uh, but I think what we're all trying to say is that you know, don't don't feed into that as like that's what's normal. That's what you should look like. Everybody's gonna do what makes them feel good. And for her, right. for whatever reason, she feels like that's what I need. This is what I need to do. She may feel certainly on a, a level that I could not understand the pressures of Hollywood, yes. this is her career. She's a, you know, an A-list star. So, um, you know, I just want to throw it out there that we are not in any way dissing, you know, Botox. If Botox is your thing and you want to, you know, uh, I have a, a, my very best girlfriend in the world. She's a couple years younger than me. She likes to fill that one little line that she gets. And that's, it's like, if that makes her feel better, 
I'm like, you go for it. I'm not touching it myself. I'm too scared. Like I, I get as few needles as I need in my life. Like if I need one, all right. But yeah, for me, it's just not for me, but I just wanted to throw that out there that we're definitely not like anti anything. What we are is pro age, pro aging. Like as you age, you know, we're pro whatever Cindy talked about it all the time about, you know, even, um, dyeing your hair. If you want to dye your hair purple or blonde or brown or any color you want, if it's for you and it makes you joyful, it brings you joy. It makes you feel good or better about yourself. You should do it. You should definitely do right. it. But what I, we're trying to say is like, don't do it because you feel some pressure from the outside that, you know, you should. I think we're trying right. to create a space where you don't have to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like our culture is very supportive of anybody who wants to have Botox or plastic surgery right. or color yeah. their hair. That's the norm. We're trying to create a space where for those of us who don't feel, who don't want that norm, there's, there's room for us too. Right. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. I just don't have the energy to fight a losing battle. Like, exactly. I'd, I'd rather go out in the forest and hug a tree. I mean, that's I'd how I want to spend my birds. time. You know, that's my thing. So right. yeah. Yeah, right. birding yeah. is it for me. Talking about joy, man. <laughs> yeah. I also wanted to make sure that all the women know that I wasn't discovered as being a model. I, I decided I want to be a model. So cool. I'm doing the things that, that, created this modeling career for me and and everything is bossy everything is body positive right now so don't wait till you lose your last 20 pounds apply to modeling agencies today like you don't have to be this this perfect model anymore it's yeah, not like that anymore be like a new move like a, a beauty diversity movement going on yeah. We've mm -hmm. got all races, all ages, all body types. Mm -hmm. And especially in acting, because in movies, they need real people. Right. Just, you know, they need real people. So don't wait until you think you look perfect. Go, just go for it. Yeah. 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 I love that. Such good advice. Um, I'm going to move on to, uh, it's kind of our, um, do we have any questions from, first of all, from, our audience out there in Facebook land. I'm just looking for anything about silver hair or let me see. I think I actually, um, that question that I just went back to was, um, I think was the only one that I, that I missed from earlier. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm, I think we might be good. Um, but yeah, that was so fun talking about the silver hair. I love that. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, you know, maybe the next time we talk, it'll be a little bit longer, you know, be a little bit more filled in. So that's, you know, that's going to be fun. Right. Um, and can I just add, you know, it's freedom. And not, not only is it like emotional freedom, it's financial freedom. Yeah, I literally was is. spending, I was spending $150 every six weeks to get my hair done. Yeah to put toxins on my scalp next to my brain. And within like three days, you see how white my hair is? Within three days, I could see my roots. And Your hair was, is so beautiful, by the way. You, the color you. is so great. You know? Thank you, Margaret. You're so yeah, I was beating myself in the mirror. Like, why the heck did I just spend $150? And three days later, I see my white roots. So, right. you know, it's not just emotional freedom. It's financial freedom. Yeah. Well, you said that you were married at the time, right? Mm -hmm. how did how did your husband feel you're not anymore apparently I'm no assuming. no no <laughs> he was right here <laughs> well he was he was balding and graying himself so you know realistically our partners it's nice if they they sign on to the program but I don't need anyone's permission to be me yeah. that's just part of the whole yeah. you know being independent and yeah finding I found my voice and so I was lucky enough to have a partner who thought it was really awesome so good. Love it. Love it. Well, we're going to move on to talk a little bit about skincare. So a couple more demos for those of you who are asking. Um, we have a, a couple people asking about our different moisturizers. Um, and let's see. So first of all, I always love asking this question. What is your favorite boom skincare? And how do you use it? So, Margaret, we'll start with you. Okay. 
I'm going to, I need to tell everybody out there in Facebook land that I am really, truly an outlier. I, I'm a 56 year old woman who still has, I've always had oily skin. You know, I struggled with it in high school. Um, it wasn't like major, major acne, but just, you know, high school struggles and um, still break out sometimes. I still, I'm very oily. I cannot use the same kind of moisturizers that a lot of people can. Um, but my favorite Boom product by far, I shouldn't say by far, cause I like several is Boom Scrub. I don't yeah. can't see that. I it's, the, that. Um, it's the exfoliant, the deep cleaning exfoliant. It is so awesome. Um, I like to exfoliate every day, which most people don't like to do, but my skin is so, <laughs> my skin needs it. And um, you, you use it in the bathtub or I do, because because it's a deep cleaning exfoliant, not just an exfoliant. So you, they like you to put it on your face and leave it on for five minutes. Yeah. So I do it in the bathtub when I'm shaving my legs and all that. Nice. And, um, yeah. And so I, you know, sort of rub it in, let it sit for five minutes and it, it feels so good. It, um, it tingles, but not, not a harsh tingle. It's just a very deep, rich, sort of luxurious tingle. Um, and it smells amazing. Oh yeah. The smell is, I'm not sure what it's made of. You, you could probably say why it smells so good, but it, it smells incredible. And, um, then after the five minutes are up, I don't really want to want it to end, but you have to, and you scrub it around <laughs> some more and then your face is just so soft and so smooth and there's no yeah. residue and it doesn't rip and tear your face or irritate, yeah. you, you know, like that those uh, apricot scrubs and things. I you know. Us 80s girls remember those, right? Yeah. yeah. Also, a lot of them now are like sugar scrubs, which sugar yes. also has a very sharp, you know, sugar. If you magnify it, it is basically like a little piece of glass. Like glass. Yeah. yeah. And it is, it is, you know, it is scratching and tearing at your, at your skin. Right. And I, so I'm glad you said that. Um, yeah. This does not scratch out. and tear at your skin, but it yeah. really, really leaves you with a very, very smooth face. And yeah. um, right. And it, and it really is gentle enough to use daily, but it's, yeah. it's hard enough for a girl like me who has oily, rough, porous <laughs> skin. So there actually was a question earlier about Boom Scrub, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't use it every day. I definitely use it, but not no, every day. You have more, your skin is probably more sensitive than mine. I would yeah, think. a little bit. But but the question I think was um, if it if it has an effect on your pores, does it make your pores a little smaller? I feel like it makes my pores a little tighter. A little looking. tighter. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think, um, you know, but then by the end of the next day, I need to use it again, but it, right, yes. right. <laughs> it, I just, I think it makes, I just have really weird skin for a person my age, but I, I absolutely love it. And I think it would work for anybody that, that needs to exfoliate. I just think people with dry skin would use it less often, probably. Right. Yeah. I think it's really helping with the mask knee stuff. Like that's oh, my yeah. only area is this since we've had to wear masks for a year. Yeah, oh, the area, and it really yeah. cleans out that whole area there. Oh, nice! Without exactly. having to like squeeze or pinch or you know mess with my skin like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I really love it, and, and the clean is great too. But those are those are my two faves. But you can move on if you'd like. <laughs> How about you, Susan? What are your favorites? This is my favorite, the Boom Nectar. I love that too. Yeah. yeah. So if I don't use the the Boom products for the cleaning, like let's for example. I'm on vacation. I didn't bring them or something. I always make sure I have this boom nectar with me at all times. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it feels so nice. I've, I know, like I said, I've never been a girly girl. This is all new to me. Skincare. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is all, this is really all new to me within the last like five, five to six yeah. years. But there's something and to it. There's something to it. I think it's just, you know, kind of like you were saying, Margaret, like I'm sure you very much look forward to that bath with that on your face like that's your oh, you know, that's gosh. your moment to like relax and for me you know I was as a teenager I was never very consistent about you know I did not have a routine like some nights I'd go to bed with probably a full face of makeup if I'm being honest you know just didn't think about it you're, you're, you're invincible at in your teens right in your 20s right. um but now I find myself really you know looking forward to that like routine of taking care of my skin for me, I, I, my favorite is Boom Gold still always. I mean, it's the smell. It's the, it's, I really didn't think I would want to put an oil on my face, but that's, you know, becoming popular, these facial oils. Mm -hmm. And so when we came out with ours, I'm like, I'm going to give that a try. And I 
don't know if I could live without it now. It is amazing. Um, it's got, I think, eight essential oils in it, honey. Um, you know, I tend to use it right around my eyes here. Really, I use it all over. The one place that I, I find um, I can't really use it is, you know, on my eyes or too close to my eyes because I will, all of a sudden I realize that it, things are a little blurrier. It doesn't burn, but if I get it in my eyes or too close to my eyes, I do tend to feel that. But otherwise I use it everywhere here, um, which some people call it the decollete. Some people call it the decolletage. I call it the decollete anyway, right here. I use it here and I find I like to use it here because then I get that aroma of the oil like for, yeah. you know, a little while after, which is so fun because then you just get to smell that amazing. It's, and these are like ancient ingredients. It's like frankincense in this thing. You know? Wow. There are some, some seriously amazing ingredients in Boom Gold. So that's, you know, that's definitely my favorite. I mean, I love a lot of them. I'm also you know, silk, of course, you know, most of us have tried boom silk, which I, I love also. I've been getting a little more into that too, maybe because the winter was a little dry. It's always dry here in Southern California, but um, the silk is so nice because it's like for your whole body. You can put yeah, it on. I love I this. Even, after I put it on, I even whatever's left on my hands, I tend to do one of these to kind of like smooth down the little flyaways. I got that trick from one of our ambassadors too. So, you know, you don't put extra on your hands to like put it through your hair, <laughs> but whatever's just happens to be on your hands. Just even if you're just doing it to like those couple pieces that just will not lay down, which we all have a couple of those and it just kind right. of smooths out that, you know, so that's kind of a little trick. I, I learned so many good little tips from the ambassadors. So uh, I, I forgot that. to That's mention. What we're here for, Colleen. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to mention when I do do the boom nectar. This is probably why I love it so much. I totally spaced it out because it's become automatic. Is I do like a face a facial facial massage. Like yeah. I actually do a facial massage and I say affirmations either out loud or to myself. You know, you're beautiful. You're worthy. You're strong. You're invincible. You know, so I, I, it's part of my like self-care mindfulness routine yes thank you for yeah. sharing that I think yeah. that's so important for you know we can't hear it often enough right how amazing we are we, we take care of a lot of stuff us ladies us women. yes we do so, yeah and um and like you said earlier <laughs> yeah exactly like you said earlier you know we show those affections and affirmations and you know we show that love to all sorts of people that we take care of or that we, you know, interact with during the day. And for you to kind of just the way that you frame that, uh, that was very, you know, that I'm really, that's a great takeaway for me tonight. Um, just saying like, well, we do it for them. Like be your own biggest important? fan. Right. This is all you need to remember. Be your own biggest yeah. fan. How much you root on the sidelines for your kids at baseball. You need to be rooting for yourself all day long. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That is going to be a big takeaway for me. Um, let's see. So, uh, so we already we talked about the boomsticks. I definitely wanted to circle back to the boom bright, and you don't have to demo this, Susan, if you don't want to. I'm going to do it, um, okay? <laughs> just because, yeah, for me, um, and I've said this before on previous uh, ladies' nights. Like this is kind of like the final touch. Like this is like girls going out or like, I'm going to like, you know, I, I'm going to be on a zoom call. I want to like put my best face forward. I always, you know, go for a little bit of mascara just to kind of finish the look. So I'm going to do this, even though we, we laughed earlier um, about making the mascara face. So I'm probably going to make the mm -hmm. mascara face a little bit. We're going to look at you. It's the mess. How, how many layers do you put on Colleen? I'm just going to do one right now because I can't see my eyes and I don't want to poke myself in the eye, but I would say, you know, one layer, um, is kind of for like every day. I've always had very sensitive eyes, allergies to pollens and all sorts of things growing up. Um, this is one of the very few mascaras that I can wear because it's, you know, the ingredients profile is so clean. Um, so, you know, I would say if I'm going to go out somewhere, I might do a second coat. But typically just, you know, I'm just looking for that, like that finish, that little, you know, that mm -hmm. little finishing touch. Yeah, I see it already. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it's not too much. And actually speaking of finishing touches, I forgot to put this on earlier when I 
when I put on my boom sticks, but like I have a little, oh, <laughs> so cute. Patrick, say little, what do they call these fascinators? Fascinator. Oh. Yeah, so it's my little, my little fascinator. Yeah. But yeah, for me, the boom bright is like, that's the little finishing, little finishing touch, like the cherry on top. Yeah. And I love that. So, and yeah, like in a little while, if I were to actually be going out, I might, I might put another layer on. And that's what's so nice about this buildable formula is even if you put two or three coats on, it doesn't clump and it's not, mm -hmm. you know, it's just not too much. Um, one right, thing they just I, get longer. They just get longer. It's yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. So I think, um, and by the way, I do want to mention that if you, if you have not tried our mascara yet, um, it's sold out currently. So if you go to our site, yeah, it's so popular. Nice. Like we got it in, it's sold out in like four days when we first, wow. when we first introduced it in our store, which is amazing. Um, and, uh, and then we got it back again and it sold out pretty quickly. It lasted a couple of weeks this time, I think, but, uh, we are getting some more in a little bit later in, um, uh, actually at the beginning of May, so, but you can get on a waiting list. If you go to the site, you can sign up for the waiting list and we will let you know as soon as it's back in stock. Um, but yeah, it definitely, it sold out quick. And, um, and, it, and one thing I will say about specifically Bright and a lot of our other products actually is we get our ideas for products from you all. We get them from our customers and our readers and our ambassadors. And so, you know, if there's something that you really like uh and we don't have it let us know about it you know and we may just we may just you know have something coming and that was the case with boom bright people said you know a mascara is something i'd really you know love to to have and we were talking about community earlier one of the th things about you know building um a community is when you know our our community contributes to what we're growing here, you know, to our business and in what we launch and what we, the products that we make. And uh, we really, we really are listening. So um, if there's something, like I said, that you, you would really love for us to have, let us know about it. We might just, we might just, you know, might just happen. Um, so let's see. Oh, and Cheryl uh, is asking, what do you use to take off the mascara? So uh, I actually was going to touch on this. So again, this is not a waterproof mascara. So it comes off with water. It does come off with water. Um, it, you can also use uh, on a, you know, on a tissue or something, a little touch of most of our moisturizers. I would not necessarily recommend Boom Gold because as I said, if I get it too close to my eyes, it tends to get my eyes get a little blurry for a while until it kind of self clears itself. But um, people use a little swipe of Boom Silk, um, or just soap and water are clean, you know, our boom clean on a, on a wet washcloth and it just really wipes away pretty easily. Um, I use coconut oil on just a tissue. Coconut oil. Yeah. Coconut oil is like another magical, magical substance. Right. And I'm sure it would mm -hmm. come right off with that too. Yeah. And almost anything really, you don't need a makeup remover though. Um, just something, you know, natural, one of our moisturizers or coconut oil or water, soap and water. Um, let's see. Uh, we do have one other question. Uh, actually, no, that I think I already addressed this a little bit earlier. Um, as far as the uh, waterproof mascara, uh, and and I hear you, Rebecca. I that's what I was trying to say. You articulate it so nicely. You said, you know, women of our age tend to be a little sentimental. So um, <laughs> we need yeah. a waterproof mascara. <laughs> yeah. And so, Definitely. you know, we, we need something that is, uh, you were saying that Susan, right? Like you're, you're I cry three or four times a day. Oh, me too. I just have such a big heart. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, uh, so Nancy asks, if you have oily skin, can you use the boomstick trio? Oh yeah. 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 
Um, don't look at my forehead right now. I'm seeing how, how oily it's getting, but that's not the trio doing that. You look amazing, Margaret. You look amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I worried about that a little bit. The first time I, I started using Boomstick, uh, Boomstick Trio, I thought, are these going to make me look oily? Are they going to make me break out? Not at all. I've never had any trouble with them whatsoever. And I've been using them for, mm, well, the Boomstick Color I've been using for a few years. The other, the other two six months now, no trouble whatsoever. It's, I, I love it, love it. Best makeup I've ever used with my oily skin. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, I think that just, you know, speaks to what we were saying earlier. Great on any skin tone, really great on any skin, you know, texture type. or type, oily skin, dry skin. Especially uh, the color. The color is just great on, on everything. Yeah. If yeah. I'm, I'm about to go out after this, so I'm just going to show you guys how I darken it up. Nice. Are you, out, are you going out partying? No, I'm just going to go uh, for a little dinner with the family. Oh, nice. I don't think anything's open for partying per I'm se. Little. Do you have children, Susan? At least, at least I mean, not in Montana. Yeah, I have an 18 year old son and a 21 year old daughter. Okay. Nice. So see how much redder my cheeks got? It was just a yeah, little bit did, extra. They yeah. They look great. Yeah. A little zhuzh, as we call it. We like do a little zhuzh. Yeah, I, I love, love this stuff. I'm yeah. like, wow, look at my cheekbones pop. Yeah, I know. You look you look yeah. Good. You looked beautiful when you arrived on the call, but it's like- Even better like, now. Ba -ba -boom. It's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's amazing. You. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I think we haven't gotten any more questions for a couple minutes here. I think maybe- um, you know, might be a good time to let Susan get out to her dinner. And uh, I do want to, once again, thank everybody um, out there watching us on Facebook. And of course, Margaret and Susan, thank you so much for coming and, you know, sharing your stories with us. We had so many comments here. And if you look on the Facebook feed, you know, after we hang up, uh, you'll see, um, you know, everyone just loved you. They loved all the stories. I love the realness. I feel like you, both of you really brought some, you know, some very relatable and real stories tonight. And I love hearing them. Um, yeah. And so, you know, anybody who's watching us on Facebook, if you enjoy tonight, do us a favor, just say yes in the comments, let us know what you liked about it. Um, you know, again, we take your feedback and your thoughts and your questions for the next ladies night and for our products. And so, you know, anything that you, you know, want to let us know, we would love to hear from you. And, um, and so thank you again, Susan and Thank Margaret. you so thank much you for having so me. Much this fun. was so much fun.